This is Craig Migliaccio from AEC Service Tech, and today we're at Audubon Plumbing Supply Company in Cape May County, New Jersey, and we're going over our Southwark ductwork. We're going over trunk duct today, so we're focusing on our trunk duct offsets, 90s, 45s, and sizes of ductwork so that you know what you're ordering and the proper terminology when you go to a supply house. So here we have a standard section of ductwork, and this is a four foot section. So you can see right here, four foot. But when we order this at the supply house, you wanna go with your depth or your width first, which is 14 inches. And then next is your rail size or your height, and that, in this case, it's eight inches. And then your length, in this case, it's four foot. And so your dimension is gonna be based on the cubic feet per minute of airflow needed for the system, for the air conditioning system or the furnace. When you order a four foot section of ductwork or even an eight foot section, they're gonna come in two pieces and they have to get hammered together with a mallet or a duct hammer. And so this little ridge right here goes right into this section in order to lock these two sections of ductwork together. As you can see, we have different widths right here and different rail sizes. And so you wanna make sure that you're ordering this stuff properly. So in this case, it's 12 inch for this piece right here. So we got 12 inch by a six inch rail size and that's a four foot length. Of course, this is only one piece and it's gonna come as two pieces. Here we have a 14 by six inch by four foot. And that's a four foot section of rectangular duct. So you're always gonna make sure that you're saying that 14 by six by four foot rectangular duct, I need however many sections of that. In this case right here, we got a 12 inch by 10 inch rail by a four foot. Once again, this is only one piece, but they always come in two. And in this case right here, we have an 18 by eight by eight foot section of ductwork. And the whole point is to reduce the labor when you're hanging this ductwork. So you don't have to put two four foot sections together. You already have a full eight foot section. And just keep in mind that this always has to do, you know, the size of the duct always has to do with how much airflow that you need to supply in the building for the HVAC equipment. So, you know, we always connect our rectangular ductwork with slide and drive. And so in this case, this is the drive section that you're gonna use for this ear to connect two pieces of ductwork. So this is a eight inch piece of drive, but it's actually gonna measure 10 inches from here to here because these tabs are gonna get folded over like that. And so you have different sizes. This is for a six inch, this is for an eight inch rail size. And here we have for a 10 inch rail size. As well, you have your slip, slide, S-lock, cleat. Um, so it's, it has three different names. And so this ends up going right here between right here and here. And it's usually about a quarter inch less. So in this case, it will be 17 and three quarter inches. Now we're gonna move on to how we attach this into the return or supply plenum of the HVAC system. So here we have a couple of plenum boxes and these were made custom out of three foot or eight foot sheets of metal. And so we have our return box and then we have our supply box. Now you can also get an adjustable plenum or what's also called a knockdown plenum and you can build that out in the field. But basically the first thing that you're gonna do is you're going to be attaching a rectangular duct collar. And so some people call these takeoffs, but anytime that you call something a collar, typically you have these tabs that you're going to be cutting this section in and then folding these tabs over to lock it into the plenum box. So here we have a filter rack with a collar on the side. And so basically you'd start off with this and then after that you'd start with your section of ductwork. So you have one of these where you can uh, open this up in order to get to the filter. This right here is a standard uh, collar right here, a rectangular collar. And so in this case, if you were to order this collar, it's gonna be 18 by eight straight collar. And so that is a rectangular collar. Now here we have a offset collar. So once again, a rectangular offset. And the whole point of this is when you're ordering this, you're gonna order it by the duct size over here, not necessarily this size. And so remember that anytime it's a collar, you're gonna have the tabs. And so you could fold these tabs over. You can also put some sheet metal screws into these half inch flanges. Here we have a transition collar and this right here is a 24 by eight. And that's because this dimension right here is 24 wide by eight inch high. And so this goes into a odd section of ductwork in order to expand it to the proper trunk duct size. Remember that we use trunk duct because it's low in height. 
So if you are hanging this overhead, you need to be able to have the, the correct amount of head space. And so that's why we're, we're selecting the different types of ducts with the various rail sizes, either six inch, eight inch, 10 inch, 12 inch. Now, if you're trying to reduce vibration or if you have a, a duct kind of hanging down and you want to slide your whole furnace or air handler assembly in place, uh, this makes it real easy for doing change outs. And so here you have a canvas connector. And so you could push all of this up, say if this was on the top right here. And then when you're going to slide and drive to do the connection, you can cut that right in the top. And so here's an example of an end cap with our uh, slide and drive connection kind of cut and bent into it. So we would do this with a folding tool and you could do this in the side of a duct or the top of the duct. You don't have to use a collar. It can be a slide and drive connection. So here on this connection, we have a slide and drive connection. So we're going to slip our S lock right onto this cut piece. And then we can take our section of drive material. Since this is opened up, this can slide right over that in order to lock this in. And so we'll slide that all the way over. And then we can fold these tabs over when we're done. And so you typically use a duct hammer and just tap that over. And always make sure you're wearing gloves. And then to seal that up, we use our duct mastic all along here to make sure that we don't have any air leaks. This is one of the most confusing fittings to order because this has three names and this one has two names. It depends on the supply house in which you're ordering these 90 degree elbows from. And so what you have right here is a 16 by eight long way flat or horizontal 90. And so you got to think that this is a long way, which means it's the longest point to point. Whereas this one right here is considered a short way 90. It's also known as a vertical 90. So you're going to give the dimensions first and then state what it is vertical or short way, or in this case, it's a long way flat or horizontal 90. Here we have a 16 by eight horizontal flat or long way 45. And in this case, we have a vertical or short way 45. And so remember all this stuff is put together with slide and drive and the duct work and fittings. Basically you're hanging that with sections of drive cleat and these come in 10 foot sections. So you can hang all your sections of duct work with your drive cleat. As the main trunk is run through the building and as supply runs are taken off of the main trunk, you're going to need to reduce the duct down in order to maintain any uh, air velocity for the supply registers uh, and runs that are going to be downstream of the reducing fitting. And so the whole point of this is that you're going to have the large dimensions first followed by the smaller dimensions. And these reducing transition fittings may be 10 inches or maybe 12 inches long. And so you can install one of those or you can install a, a reducer or kicker into the smaller duct. So basically you'll have your smaller duct right here down here and it's going to expand to accept the larger duct. And so this is a four inch kicker right here. And here we have a two inch kicker. And so here we have just a standard end cap. And so you would want to put your cross brakes in here so that you don't have any popping noise when the air is flowing through the ductwork. Here we have a 22 by 12 in duct mechanical fire damper. So this would have to be inserted into the ductwork, basically where the penetration is for a fire rating inside of a building. And what that means is maybe two layers of 5 8 sheetrock, which has a one hour fire rating. You'd put this mechanical damper right there. If there's a fire, this little anchor right here is going to melt and this is going to spring load and shut shut this down so it's not providing air for the fire. This is a smaller size, once again, an induct mechanical fire damper. And then here is a inspection access door. And so this has a collar which gets cut into the side of the duct so you can inspect it to make sure that they're still in the open position. So here we have panning material. So you may see this nailed or screwed onto joists. And what's happening is they're using the bay between say the sheetrock and the joists and we're closing that off with panning material with a little Pittsburgh edge. And then this slipped in here. And so we used to use this for panning return bays, but now we have to install an actual duct between here. So it's fully in metal. You also may run into kind of like a cardboard that they use to cut this, the, to close it off. But I would not advise to use that because I've seen a lot of that kind of squished in and then you're drawing return air from the crawl space or the attic. But I just want you to be aware of what this is. This is just your 
small pieces of painting material for your 16 inch on center joists. I know we've been talking about rectangular trunk duct, but if height is not a problem, then the easiest uh, main trunk to use is actually round pipe. And so you can cut your collar right here on the side. You can use adjustable 90s instead of fixed 90s. And so you can adjust these and kind of head in whatever direction that you want to head. And then you can use reducers right here. And so basically you don't have to do any slide, any drive or anything. And so you can put three to four screws on this after you slip this on and then you can put your mastic on and that's it. Now this is a pair of pants or a Y reducer. And so right here you can see it can reduce from this size down to our two eight inch right here. And if you just had straight, say 10 inch pipe, you could use a saddle collar with this adhesive tape right here. And you can also use these, once again, adjustable 90s to make whatever uh, angle that you want to make. And then you're going to use a round end cap just like this. These round sections of pipe come at five foot long. And so you can get shorter pipes, like, like say two foot, and you can get them in different gauge sizes. In this case, we have 26 gauge. As you go up in gauge sizes, the metal gets thinner, so you can get this in 30 gauge if you'd like, but in this case, it is 26 gauge, and basically this is just gonna snap together right here at this seam, and so that can be your trunk duct. For commercial applications, you may use a spiral duct instead of a standard, regular round duct, and this is more rigid, and you can get longer lengths for this, and then here you have a register takeoff that can get mounted right in the side right here. So that's that. I hope you enjoyed this video on the introduction to sheet metal trunk duct and a special thanks to Southwark and also Autobahn Plumbing Supply Company in Cape May County, New Jersey. And so if you want to learn more about HVAC, make sure to check out our website over at acservicetech.com where we have a bunch of free resources such as our articles, our quick tips, the podcast, calculators, quizzes. We also have our refrigerant charting and service procedures for air conditioning book workbook and quick reference cards. So make sure to check all that out over at acservicetech.com and hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.